In this video, you will learn how to control an RGB LED. You should already be familiar with how to control a single color LED, be able to calculate the resistance of resistors in parallel, be able to manipulate string variables, and be able to use while loops and if statements. The first thing to notice about an RGB LED is the number of pins it has. Single color LEDs have two pins, one cathode and one anode, but an RGB LED has four pins. The pin labeling is as follows, with pin 2 being the cathode, and pin 1, 3, and 4 being anodes, one for each color. This is known as a common cathode LED, as each of the three internal LEDs is connected to the same cathode. Now this is the case for the RGB LED that I'll use, but you can also easily find common anode RGB LEDs. So first check which of the two you have. When we wire this circuit, we will attach the cathode to the 3.3 volt rail, and pin 1, 3, and 4 to three separate GPIO pins. When the pins are set high, there will be zero potential difference across the LED, so it will not light. Only when we set a GPIO pin to low will a current be able to go through the LED. Of course, we are dealing with current-loving LEDs here, so we need to choose some resistors for each of the three colors. I find that 4 milliamps makes for a very bright LED. I used a variable power supply to find out what voltage produces 4 milliamps of current, which gave me these values. These were lower than the suggested voltages given to me by the supplier, but I never go with those. After all, a green LED might run great at 3.1 volts with 20 milliamps of current, but that's a little too much current for the GPIO pins to safely handle. Since the LEDs will be powered from the 3.3 volt rail, we can calculate the voltage across each of the resistors by subtracting the LED voltage from 3.3 volts. The current through the resistors will be the same as through the LEDs, so we can simply use Ohm's law to calculate the resistance. You may not have resistors close to each of these values, but you can get close enough with just using 330 ohm resistors. Specifically, you can get these values if you use multiple 330 ohm resistors in parallel. To calculate the resistance of resistors in parallel, we use this equation. It's a little messy to work with, but there are some simple cases. To calculate two resistors in parallel, we simply divide by two. And likewise, for three parallel resistors, we simply divide by three. You can check that this works using the equation, but it also conceptually makes sense that if you give twice as great a path for the current to pass through, the resistance will be half as great. So here's the circuit we need to set up. Of course, all of this is the RGB LED, where the numbers correspond to the pin numbers as before. Okay, let's write the code. As always, we import the GPIO module and set mode as board. We next set up three GPIO pins as outputs and set each of them to high. Remember that in this circuit, only when we set a pin low will the LED light. Here, pin 11 is for red, pin 13 is for green, and pin 15 is for blue. You may prefer to initialize this using a list and a for loop if you have experience using them. It makes the code a little neater. As I want this program to loop until there is a keyboard interrupt, I will use a try except block. In the try block, I will place a while loop set to being always true. And in the keyboard interrupt block, I will place a cleanup command that will reset the GPIO pins to their default values upon exit. In the while loop, I will ask the user which of the three LEDs should be turned on. What I would like is a three digit number made of ones and zeros, which works as follows. If the user types 101, zero will mean on, and so the green LED will turn on, and the other two will be turned off. If the user types 010, both the red and blue LEDs will turn on, and the green will be turned off. It's not all that user friendly, but I'm making this program for me to play with. Feel free to improve upon this terrible user interface. I'll use an if statement to check to make sure that the request is three digits. If it is, then I will set my three output pins accordingly. Here request zero means the first digit, request one means the second digit, and request two means the third digit. I need to use the int method to turn the user's strings into numbers, which will be interpreted as highs and lows. Let's see this in action. Okay, let's run the program. Let's start off with red, and remember that we need a zero to turn on, so R is zero, and the other two I'll leave off. And there we have red. Likewise for green, and for blue, I can do a combination of colors. I could do all three of them, which should look pretty white, or of course I could do none of them. And then any other combinations that you're curious about. Well, that's of course just red, but there's red and blue mixed together, making a bit of a pink purpley color. Okay, I hope you give it a try.